This episode is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Starship updates, Blue Origin progress update and Starliner orbital flight test. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. And before we dive into today's episode, I want to give you a little heads up. I'm planning to take off some time for the holidays and so I'm gonna skip the next two Thursday episodes. But I'm planning a little special in return. On next Monday I'll have a Q&A episode where I'll answer the most pressing questions from the patrons and on the next Monday I'll have a collaboration episode with Chris from Beautiful Science. And finally, fingers crossed, January 4th you'll get to see the Crew Dragon in-flight abort test with me on another livestream. And after that everything will go back to the normal Monday to Thursday schedule. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates When it comes to Starship right now, infrastructure seems to be SpaceX's main focus. Florida and Texas are very much focused on building the structures needed to support the next phase of the Starship program. Starship seems to be headed into orbit. SpaceX is building very fast. Both sites, the shipyard and the launch facility, are being remodeled and improved. At the launch site, soil has been replaced on a large scale. This area definitely is large enough to place a proper launch tower including a flame diverter for Starship and Super Heavy. Right next to it is the large concrete pad. If SpaceX is still somewhat sticking to the original building plan, this is the landing pad for Starship and Super Heavy. Right now there is some sort of tower structure sitting on one side of the pad. Next up we have the transfer ramp between Fuel Farm with Mark 1 launch mount and the landing pad. It's unclear right now if SpaceX will use the Mark 1 launch mount at all. It has completely been cleared. Starship Mark 1 is only a memory now. Then there's the shipyard, which is equally busy remodeling the whole place right now. Even one of the dirt road entrances, typical for the site, is gone by now with a proper gate installed. The site is changing from a backyard construction site to a proper facility worthy of the task ahead. SpaceX is investing much more money. The footprint is growing almost every day and SpaceX is shielding the site against viewers more and more as well. Large shipping containers are being placed between the road and the shipyard. One purpose for the barriers is to have some more privacy while working on the orbital prototypes. Finally, deconstruction of the nose cone has not continued so far. Besides the fuel lines going up on the side and the aerodynamic fairings on the canard fins, the fairing section is still standing. If the flight design for the orbital prototype is too different though, the fairing section will not be used and deconstruction should continue soon. We'll have to wait and see, but there are a few statements from insiders by now that lead to the conclusion that the nose section will not be used at least as it is right now. SpaceX is receiving more and more parts. According to Maria Pointer, trucks are pulling in 16 hours per day, filling the air with diesel fumes and noise. One thing is for sure, Boca Chica will never be the same again. Yet another sign for SpaceX stepping up the game right now is this trailer. At first glance, not really important, this trailer holds one of the clues to construction improvement. It's a Red D Arc welder certification trailer. It basically is a training and certification facility for welders on wheels. It holds 8 welding stations supporting all sorts of different welding techniques and the proper environment to certify the welders in a controlled environment. And SpaceX has put up another very promising sign at the shipyard. Where SpaceX before, based on some inside information, did their launch control operations out of Brownsville, this is going to change in the future as well. This is the place where the new launch control center will be erected hopefully in the near future. But what about Florida? John Winkup has been busy again flying his drone at the Sitco site in Coco for us. Most of the ring segments are gone now and there is no apparent visual progress on Mark II anymore. A few of the aerodynamic fairings for the tank section are laying around in the open and there is still at least some activity there. It's really hard to tell what the future will hold for this site. But there is one other Starship related site in Florida that holds the key to SpaceX's east coast activities when it comes to rapidly reusable rockets. Pad 39A The launch mount has been growing more and more recently and the newly added curved slope on one side very much looks like a flame diverter system. It's safe to say by now that this will be the real deal and not an intermediate solution. So SpaceX right now is building loads of infrastructure and they will need it if the next step in the Starship development process is supposed to be an orbital flight. 
2020 will be very busy for Boca Chica, Texas and Roberts Road in Florida. Blue Origin Progress Update On the last episode, I had a segment about New Shepard's flight and it was very popular. No wonder, considering that Blue Origin is the only serious competitor to SpaceX when it comes to heavy lift reusable rockets. And Blue Origin right now is ramping up the same way SpaceX is with the Starship program. Oliver Hankoffer from spaceflightcenter.de reached out to me and provided me with some very nice pictures of the latest progress in Florida. Make sure to show some love for his help on the comments. Thank you very much. At Exploration Park, where Blue Origin is building their main assembly facility for New Glenn rockets, construction seems to be at an advanced state now. The main administration building and the assembly and integration hangar behind it are done from the outside. A large vertical booster assembly building behind it is growing fast. The purpose of this facility is to build boosters and first stages for delivery to the pad. The parking lot in front is getting more and more crowded every week now, indicating lots of work done on the inside of the buildings as well. At Launch Complex 36, formerly used for historic missions like Surveyor and Pioneer, Blue Origin is making fast progress as well. Blue Origin decided to build something completely new instead of refurbishing the old launch complex. They deconstructed the old launch site and started from scratch. The main structures here are fuel farm, horizontal integration facility, launch mount and a very large water tower for the sound suppression system. All these structures are in the process of construction or done by now. The large water tower that on the last update was about halfway done is looking over the site now. It will provide the needed pressure for the sound dampening system when seven BE-4 engines light up for the first test launches of the new Glenn rocket. Next up, we have the horizontal integration facility growing and growing. Its main purpose is to integrate the rocket and do final launch preparations as well as possible refurbishment of flown boosters. The structure is very large to say the least, indicating Blue Origin's seriousness to make new Glenn a competitor at least to SpaceX's Falcon rockets. We can also now, for the first time, get a peek at the new launch structure. As New Glenn's launch structure will be comprised of a mount for the rocket and a separate launch tower fixed on the pad, it's hard to tell which one we're looking at here. It will have to grow a bit more before we can make out more details. What's also becoming more and more visible are the pad platform itself and the large ramp leading from the HIF to the launch pad itself. Every New Glenn rocket will take this ramp up to the launch tower before liftoff. And we have some new pictures of where the boosters will land, too. This is what Blue Origin intends to use for their offshore landings. At first glance, a similar approach to SpaceX's drone ship, the X-Freighter takes a different approach. The main difference here is that SpaceX's barge is stationary when the Falcon boosters land, whereas New Glenn's boosters are supposed to be able to land on a moving ship. Much larger in size than SpaceX's ships, the ship has been docked at the port of Pensacola for over a year now. Deck structures have already been removed and next up should be the installation of the large landing pad we were already able to see in concept pictures released by Blue Origin. To put it in perspective for you, SpaceX's drone ships are roughly 90 by 50 meters, whereas the Blue Origin landing ship is about double the size at roughly 180 meters. There is still no new information on when Blue Origin exactly is planning a first test launch of the new Glenn rocket other than 2020, but with so much money invested, Blue Origin is here to stay. Starliner Orbital Flight Test This one just can't miss today's episode as it is far too important. Boeing is getting ready to shoot the first Starliner towards the ISS. After the pad abort test, which had mixed results with one chute not opening and lots of hypergolic fuel floating around the landing zone, Boeing now is getting ready for the first uncrewed mission to the ISS. With a milestone already achieved by SpaceX's Crew Dragon, Boeing is catching up on their timeline of sending astronauts to space sometime in the summer of 2020. At the time of recording the episode, the rollout on top of the ULA Atlas V rocket towards Space Launch Complex 41 was already in progress and if nothing interferes, the launch should take place tomorrow, December 20th at 6.30 a.m. EST or 11.36 UTC. If everything goes according to plan, the Starliner will stay docked with the ISS until December 28th, when the capsule will return to Earth and land in the western United States. It will carry around 270 kilograms of cargo to the ISS on the trip and return science back to Earth. The orbital flight test will be the first flight of an Atlas V without a payload fairing and its first flight with a dual-engine Centaur upper stage. 
The dual-engine Centaur is required for Starliner flights in order to provide a launch trajectory that allows for a safer board at any point in the mission. As much as SpaceX and Boeing are racing against each other to get astronauts to the ISS, they are also profiting from knowledge that was gained over generations of spaceflight activity. Sometimes it's just hard to see the bigger picture. I mean, what could Neil Armstrong have to do with old Greece? And if you don't know the answer, Brilliant.org can help. Brilliant.org gives you the bigger picture. Their whole purpose is to transfer knowledge gained by generations upon generations of scientists working their way up all the way from the caves to the ISS. And Brilliant.org has found some very clever ways to make learning interesting, manageable and fun. Knowledge is like a puzzle. The more pieces you have in the right place, the easier it gets to predict the empty spots. This Christmas, why not give the gift of knowledge? Go to Brilliant.org slash whataboutit and grab a gift subscription to help your loved ones complete their bigger picture. The first 200 people to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So gift knowledge with Brilliant.org. Link is in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? When will new Glenn fly and will Starliner do a successful flight to the ISS? As always, tell me in the comments. Alright, skip to the bloopers if you don't want to hear me thank my patrons. This is not a commercial or the try to make you a patron or whatever. This is me thanking my patrons for what they're doing for the channel. And despite the negative comments, I will continue to do this, as the patrons are the most incredible thing that has happened to me here on YouTube. They help me, they provide funding and they accompany me on this journey and I'm incredibly grateful for what they're doing. And as always, there are new members on the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Jim Knapp and many more. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, remember to hit the like and the subscribe button because that helps the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. In your face, negative comments. It's not a tumor. <laughs> pressing questions from the pre page. Pre <laughs> next Monday. Uh Monday. Fingers crossed. Crossed. On the last episode, I had a shep. I had a shepherd. <laughs>